Hello and welcome to this autopipe training on nonlinear analysis using load sequencing. First, let's do an introduction to nonlinear analysis. Autopipe offers two types of solutions for static analysis. We can do a linear static analysis or a nonlinear static analysis. The difference between these two solutions is in the treatment of the supports and the soil. In general, most supports in the real world contain gaps and might offer some frictional resistance. And these effects are considered to be nonlinear since the response of the support may change depending upon the load and how the load is sequenced with other loads. For linear analysis, we're assuming constant pipe properties, small deflections, and elastic deformation. And we get a proportional response to the application of the load. For nonlinear analysis, the pipe properties can change loading can change, and large deflections occur, and deformation can occur. The response to the applied load in this case is not proportional, so there can be changes in behavior at various load states. Nonlinear analysis is important because most piping systems are inherently nonlinear in nature. There are some assumptions considered by Autopipe when we run a static analysis. Autopipe uses finite element analysis using the stiffness method, beam element theory, and it uses centerline dimensions. Elastic response is assumed using small deformation theory, first order only, so there's no changing to the loading that occurs due to the deformation of the piping system. If we use this example of a simple supported beam, first order theory considers the basic shear moment and deflection with respect to the underformed structure. The second order theory would consider additional stresses in the structure like the tension or compression in the top or bottom flanges with respect to the deformed structure. And again, we ignore that. The pipe remains linear. There's no yielding of the pipe considered. The supports may act in one way or both ways. It considers longitudinal bending deformations only, so it ignores local stresses like the bending of the pipe wall and stress concentration at T's and bends. And in pipe stress analysis, we use SIFs to capture this behavior. There are six degrees of freedom per node. The analysis is performed by solving a set of linear equations. And the Gauss elimination method is used for the solution of these equations. When building a piping model, the support gap and friction properties are requested by Autopipe. If these values are set to zero, the support is assumed to be linear. Gap and friction properties can be entered for V-stops, line stops, guides, incline supports, and tie links. Autopipe considers the following supports in a nonlinear analysis supports with gaps and one-way restraints, a large gap that's larger than the pipe diameter can be specified in order to model a one-way restraint, and friction between the pipe and support. At the bottom of the support dialog, you'll notice a gap setting input. The two options are weightless and as-built. Weightless is the default setting. The gap can change when the gravity load is applied and the stop may engage. Most supports will be considered as weightless. For greenfield projects and any new support on a brownfield project, it would be a weightless support. For as-built supports, the gap is assumed to be open for the gravity load case and then it's set to the specified value after the gravity load is applied. The stop will then only engage if the pipe displacement due to any loads other than gravity exceed the gap. New supports on a brownfield project are commonly as-built supports. If a support is added to an existing line that is deflected under the gravity load case, as seen at point 0.82 in this figure, the support should be specified as as-built. If the line is sure to remove the deflection prior to adding the support, it should be specified as weightless. It's important for users to understand that when specifying a support in any direction as as-built, 
a small gap must be specified in that direction as well. Friction will exist at all supports where some movement is permitted. The friction can prevent the free expansion movement of the pipe through the support and create higher stresses in the pipe and higher loads of the equipment. But in some instances, the friction can actually serve as a guide and prevent static loads from being transmitted to equipment. So it's unclear that it's conservative to include or ignore friction for static analysis. For dynamic loads, the friction reduces the pipe stresses and the equipment loads, so it's clear that it's conservative to ignore friction. But there is no rule of thumb to deal with friction for static loads, and the effect of friction has to be investigated to simulate as closely as possible the real situation. In Autopipe, it's very easy to run two analysis sets, one with friction and one without, to compare the results to determine the conservative approach. Nonlinear dynamic analysis is not possible, and the nonlinear feature will be removed for dynamic analysis. A nonlinear analysis is an iterative process which will stop once all of these convergence criterion are met. Bearing force, displacement, friction force, soil force, and soil displacement. A nonlinear analysis provides a more accurate estimate of structural response for systems which include supports with gaps and friction and or those which are buried in soil. The nonlinear effect is specified by enabling the nonlinear option in the analysis sets dialog and is only available for static loads. Alternatively, you can enable the gaps friction soil option in the static analysis load cases dialog. Although the titles of these options are different, they are the same, and if one is checked on, the other will also be and vice versa. In doing this, the nonlinear analysis options are revealed and can be altered if appropriate to help with convergence problems or to alter the load sequencing. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.